Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1998. We're going to be taking a look at Tracy Chapman and she's going to be playing through her monster hit Fast Car. So let's get Tracy up on screen and see how she gets on. Somewhere, any place is better. Starting from zero, got nothing to lose. Maybe we'll make something. Me, myself, I got nothing to prove. jump in here because this is a classic example of a true artist in full flow and the amount of dynamic subtlety that's going on here because when you're watching a top artist like Tracy is you forget about the fact that she's playing fingerstyle guitar and singing at the same time. Also the subtle bass that's in there as well. And when we then get into the chorus, it's such a subtle step up dynamically, the way that the drums come in, but the drummer's using brushes here. So a really subtle sound on the drum kit, but also there's a fade in and a fade out of what could be the guitarist, the second guitarist that we can see just in the left of the shot there or on keys, but it's so subtle subtle it just drops in and then drops out in the chorus but just adds so much and just the way that Tracy has composed this whole track but also arranged it for her guitar playing in the verses we have the finger style where we're just getting single notes it's a really nice arrangement the way that she's put together these chord voicings if you do play guitar it's a really nice track to play through finger style but then getting into the chorus leaning into the sound and now starting with the strumming and that's something that's going to work really well with this track that's why Tracy has written it like that in order to have that dynamic change if it's just a voice and a guitar it's still going to work because you're going from those softly picked finger style notes into a louder strumming sound for the choruses so you'll get that dynamic change and then when we put all of those things to the side in terms of the technical ability to be able to play finger style singing as well and the whole arrangement that Tracy's come up with here we can then look at the track as a whole because 
The track, just listen to the lyrics and the video that I've got here actually has the lyrics underneath. So you can check out this video afterwards. I'm gonna link it in the description for you guys and you can watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it as well. But the story of the track and the fact that we don't get to the chorus until quite a long way into the track. We've got quite a lot of the background, quite a lot of the story already laid down. She has the ability on her instrument, playing acoustic guitar, finger style, to sing at the same time and to put down a serious message within a track. It's one of those things that the top singer-songwriters have those three elements. And more often than not, they don't need to put on a massive show and have a massive light show and really keep you engaged that way because the song is engaging just by itself and that's all you need because you're following the story the whole time and having a song like this it is really similar to having a book that is a page turner in that you want to hear the next part of the story and this is where it turns into art and not music because you are engaged on every single level so you can listen to that lyrical content and you can connect with the track on a deeper level because you're not being distracted by things such as bad vocals or wrong chords or lack of tightness. And sometimes the message of a track can get lost due to those elements maybe the vocalist being off key you're now listening to those off key vocals and not to the lyrics and the message of the track so a great example here of exactly how to do it and how to deliver it live and Tracy was one of those that started really early in fact when she was only three her mum bought her a ukulele but it wasn't until she was eight years old that she started playing guitar but still really young and at that point she started to make up her own songs and get creative in that way and one of the things that Tracy said might have inspired her to start playing guitar was watching the TV show called Hee Haw over in the USA and that pops up quite a lot on my channel because I've done a few country artists and Roy Clark especially so check those out if you get a chance but getting back to Tracy because in her college years is when she was playing as much as possible busking a lot as well playing at coffee houses and it was there that a guy called Brian Koppelman saw her playing and this was a fellow student so the same age as Tracy but his dad was called Charles Koppelman and he was a founding member of SBK Records which was a universal label at that time and a couple of years later after Tracy finished college that's when Charles Koppelman was instrumental in helping her sign a record deal with Elektra Records. So straight after signing that deal, Tracy released her self-titled album and that was released with much success. It was critically acclaimed as well, but she performed this track, Fast Car, at the Nelson Mandela 70th birthday tribute concert. And from that, it really rose up the charts quickly and got to number six in the US Billboard Hot 100 chart. It also got to number four here in the UK. The album as a whole went on to go multi-platinum and also received three Grammy Awards and Tracy also received a Grammy Award for the best new artist. Let's get back into the performance. We go cruise and entertain ourselves, still ain't got a job. Now work in the market as a checkout girl, I know things will get better. You'll find work and I'll get promoted. We'll move out of the shelter, buy a big house and live in the suburbs. I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. Speed so fast, it felt like I was drunk. And the city lights stay out before us. I'm felt nice, left around my shoulder. And Speed so fast, I felt like I was drunk. City lights stay out. 
have it what a fantastic performance there isn't a wrong note anywhere there by Tracy considering that she's singing and playing at the same time I always say that it doubles the difficulty but another thing I want to draw your attention to really important dynamically is the change that the drummer goes through with using brushes to start with for that really soft sound but then by the end we've changed to sticks and it's something that you can look out for obviously playing with sticks we're going to be a lot more aggressive sound dynamically so we're really pushing the sound pushing the volume and it's one of those things that you can look out for throughout this video when that change happens so Tracy released another album in 89 another one in 92 and in 1995 is when she released her fourth album called New Beginning and that went on to sell over 3 million copies just in the USA and that spawned the single Give Me One Reason and that single went on to get to number three in the US Billboard Hot 100 chart and and it also won a Grammy for Best Rock Song. So she released another album in 2005 and another one in 2008 and in 2015 was when her greatest hits album was released and also in 2015 she had a performance on The Late Show with David Letterman that blew up the internet and that was her cover of Stand By Me. And there's a bit of controversy with another artist called Nicki Minaj who's a rapper in the USA and she was trying to sample some of Tracy's music for one of her own songs and the song that she was trying to sample was Baby can I hold you and Tracy just didn't want to have Nicki Minaj sampling her stuff and I think Tracy isn't a fan of sampling anyway just full stop and this is something that I have said about a lot of modern bands and especially rappers who sample great old songs and then rap over the top of it the hook is the song in the background it's not necessarily the rapping over the top so a lot of artists I think agree with Tracy on that in terms of having their own material just taken as a backing track effectively to then rap over. So Tracy was dead against having her track sampled but it's interesting because I didn't realise that you can release a song that is another song but just call it something else. For example, Nicki Minaj's song is called Sorry whereas it's just blatantly her singing Baby Can I Hold You. So it might have been the case that it was out of Tracy's hands because the percentage that the record label would make from Nicki Minaj's Minaj releasing one of their songs as a different song and then getting the royalties from her because she's such a big artist I think it might have been out of Tracy's hands but at least they didn't sample Tracy's track and that's what Tracy wanted but anyway back to Tracy and a fantastic performance here all round a great songwriter even referring to Baby Can I Hold You what a track that is but a true artist and somebody that really did work it from the ground up busking and playing in the coffee houses like I mentioned a great songwriter and somebody that could absolutely make a connection with an audience en masse and write an album that could connect with so many people as well but thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one rock